regards to contest speeches or, or non-contest speeches, if your if your speech has worth and value, if it somehow changes or improves the life of one person, then you're successful. And there are there are many people who've been in the world championship who haven't won, who out earn all of us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Albert Mensa. Yes. You know, David Brooks wrote his keynote speech, and now he. I wish I had his fee. <laughs> so people are doing well, doing quite well. Well, you know, right now uh, Rory Vaden is doing quite well out there in the marketplace, and he placed uh, second. I think it was last year, year before last. And oh, seven. Right? Yeah, he's he's doing quite well. So, yeah, your self worth is not based on if you win a trophy or not. And truly, I think I that summer, working that hard, my speaking got so much better. The growth because pulse. of the process exactly. is what does it. Exactly. The genius of the Toastmasters competition is the process. Yeah. And you do grow. Because the, the, one of the benefits is that you get the f you get this opportunity to become a master. Mm -hmm. We get a chance to see what, is, what, what mastery is all about. Mm -hmm. Because we take something and we mold it and we craft it and we continue to polish it and shine it. And that's what mastery is all about, mm -hmm. you know. And so we get a chance to experience mastery because of the Toastmasters process. And when I, my comedy mentor is because I started in the comedy world. My comedy mentor said, that, "Darren, it's not about writing a new speech. It's about taking what you have and making it so good that someone's willing to pay to hear it again and again and again." And I think that's the one mistake we make at Toastmasters is we teach people to write a new speech, write a new speech, write a new speech. We ingrain in us feedback give feedback but we net we fall short in teaching people how to apply the feedback and that's I think the power of the contest and my goal was I had my 45 minute keynote speech about my self-published book and I took out my best story and I worked on it worked on it worked on it worked on it for my district with my whole goal of putting it back in my district in my keynote speech raising the value of the whole speech working on one piece at a time then the valet story, my district, uh, my regional speech, same thing, to then raise the value. I didn't join the contest to win. I didn't know it went past your state. I honestly, when I joined, I thought you won the state, you were king, and it was over. <laughs> but it was, you know, then, then they're like, oh, then you go to the regional in New York. I'm like, what's a regional? <laughs> So you, you had to fight other kingdoms. <laughs> <laughs> Here is Excalibur. Here are your words. I have a, you had another I have question. a bonus content question sure. because it's, it's probably not really applicable to, well, it's not applicable to Saturday. But from the point of view of the club and, and working your way up, I've heard a lot of folks give advice that one thing you should do as a contestant, you should attend judges' training so you understand the judging criteria. And I've heard you guys say, you know, you don't speak to the judges, of course. You speak to your audience. But from that level, when you start out, what type of advice would you give as far as thinking about the audience versus the judges at that point and we're in understanding the judging criteria so that you understand how to deliver your message or if there's a change at all based on that because that's told that way in Otis a lot of places. Williams the third junior 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 1993 1993 mm -hmm. 1993 world champion of public speaking told me the following and it, it still resonates with me to this day and he said Ed be so good that the only question is who's in second place and my interpretation of that was that take the decision out of the judge's hands. That was my interpretation. My goal on that day, I, I don't know. I didn't know if I was going to have this opportunity ever, ever again. And again, I had no control over the final result. So let, let, it wasn't about manipulating the judges. It was about giving the best speech that I could on that day in terms of, of performance for me. I look at it as like golf. I wasn't competing against anyone else. I was just competing against myself. I think there is some value, though, in, in familiarizing yourself with the criteria against which the judges should be comparing your, your speech. Uh, because, you know, if you, if you don't know the rules of a game, your likelihood of success in that game are not as high as, as when you do. So I, I, don't, I don't think you should necessarily craft your speech to, to specifically uh, play to those, but I think with those things in mind, you can make sure you're, you're comprehensively covering the criteria. And I think that puts you in, in good stead. When I would practice, I did it at 22 clubs, videotaped every time, and also videotaped the feedback 
I got from mm -hmm. people because you can't accept the feedback in the moment. You're still caught up in the, the cloud of giving it. So then I could sit back and watch it and see what they saw and then evaluate whether it was good feedback or not. Mm -hmm. um, totally lost my train of thought. <laughs> it was 22 clubs? Twi no, no, no. Um, judging criteria. Oh, the judging, judging criteria. criteria. Thank you, Angie. Uh, the judging criteria, I had people in my audience literally fill out the judges' forms, and I collected them, and I really just wanted to find out what categories was I low in. Mm. Right. I didn't want their advice. Then I went to my coaches to say, all right, we're, I'm really low in vocal variety. So then I had to find a place to scream and, what, and, and be quiet. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to cover that but it wasn't my main focus of my speech. How do, I think this is a, really the biggest one. How did you guys go about choosing your topic? Oh, that was neat. that was easy for me. My, um, I had actually been traveling for a few years. I was, an, I was an executive in the computer industry and I had avoided entering the competition. There was no way I could enter that competition because of my travel schedule. So I, got, I became the training director for the Denver Rocky Mountain News and I remember <laughs> the founder of our club approaching us, he says, oh good, you can enter the world championship of public speaking. And I remember thinking to myself, oh good. <laughs> <laughs> and with that amount of enthusiasm, I remember thinking to myself, you know, I, you know I'm gonna enter this contest and um, you know, once it's over, you know, once I lose, it, it, it'll be over with. And God, it must be getting like, what's the question again? The topic. Prep, and how did I choose business. my topic? Anyway, I, I went back to my club. I went back to my club and I said, okay, out of all the speeches I've given, which ones do you like? Well, my club actually, I, so I had a body of work that I developed over the past previous year. They picked the two speeches that got me into the world championship. I said, well, now what? Now, which speech should I go with now? And, I, and my mother had passed away from breast cancer, and I had actually practiced a eulogy on the club. Actually, I attempted to practice a eulogy on the club. And it was called The Gifts My Mother Gave. And it's, um, um, they said it was like one of the most powerful speeches they've ever heard. And I thought about it. And I thought about it. And I thought about it. And I said, you know, I, no, no. Um, number one, it was for my mom. It wasn't for a contest. Number two, I don't think I could finish it. Mm -hmm. So I said, you know what, no. And at the time, I only had the seed of an incident that had taken place at the airport. It was a seed. You know, I had confronted this guy who was rude, and I got upgraded to first class. And that's all I had at the time. And I said to myself, you know what? Um, even though the gifts my mother gave was done, it was complete, mm -hmm. wasn't going to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work on this, developing this one. Fast forward, I win the world championship. I'm interviewed by Toastmaster magazine. One of the reporters asked me that, theory, that very question. How would you pick your topic? And I told her that story. And she says, this is a good thing that you chose to develop this other story as opposed to this story. She says the number one complaint that they get from around the world are speakers who are attempting to manipulate manipulate their emotions using death, dying, accidents, Sadness, et tragedy. Yeah, exactly. People are, um, there's an exhaustion factor with that. So anyway, that that's my story. And I think that's a great point too that there are seeds out there. And if we can just get people to look for the seeds those stories rather than thinking they need that incredible story to start with. Mm -hmm. How'd you pick your topics? You have the most experience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you sorry. should give a seminar on this. <laughs> well, I, I, I'm, I'm, only gonna, I'm only going to answer that. Uh, I'm only going to answer that question relative to the the 2003 speech. Sure. Um, and, and my 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 speech that year was an improved version of my regional speech from the pr previous year. But because of what I, I went through as my story played out in 2002, um, you know, I, I, I wanted to make it about, about what I previously mentioned about, you know, being an, an example for my kids. And, and that, speech was, that speech was already a good speech. When I got to thinking about it, you know, that, that message is what I wanted to give to my kids. You know, regardless of what happens, what you go through, mm. regardless of how much you think it's, it's past the time that you can, I don't mean this to sound cheesy, but this is the message of my speech. It is never too late to follow your dreams. Mm. And that's, it just, there was no other option for me. I mean, that was so crystal clear. This is the speech I'm supposed to give.